Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to create a WooCommerce product category page with Divi's Theme Builder. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is to install the WooCommerce plugin and this is absolutely free. To install it, you wanna come over here to plugins, click on add new and then you want to search for WooCommerce here and then once you once it appears you install it and activate it so as you can see I have added it and it's up here okay so the next step now is to install another plugin and this plugin is called WooCommerce product filter and this is from Themify this is the one we're going to use so I'm going to click on install and then we're going to go ahead and activate it so now we can see here that we have our product filters. That's great. The next step now is to create our categories. So if you come over here to our products, you notice that we have categories. So go ahead and select that. So at the moment we have this uncategorized. So you want to add your categories over here. So I'm going to start with a category called cases and I'm going to add this as a slug. Scroll further down and then click on add to category. So now you can see we've added it. So you want to add perhaps maybe two more. And I'm just going to rename this uncategorized here to footwear. I'm going to save this. Back to categories. And then you want to add one more. And let's call this one here accessories. Okay, great. So now we have our categories. The next step now is to add our products. So I'm going to come back over here to the products and I've gone ahead and created a, a few products here. You can see we have product A, B, C. And uh, if you want to add a brand new one, in fact, let's delete this one here so I can start from scratch. So let's say you wanted to add a new product. You just click here on add new and give it a name. So what you also need to do here is to make sure you add this to the right category. So let's add it to cases, for example. And this is going to be 12 pounds. And you can also add some tags here as well. So I'm going to add my tag and publish it. I may need to come back here and add the description. And in fact, you know what? We might as well just go in and add our description here. So I'm just been typing in a bunch of text. And this is the short description. So for this, I'm just going to remove a few lines like that. And then over here on the product image, I'm going to add my image and I'm just going to use an image here from my library. So in your case, you want to make sure you add a proper image that um, represents your product. Now I'm going to click on update and that is how you add your product and also set a category. So the next step now is to add our product filters. So I'm going to come over here, click on product filters, add new. And we can give this a title. So let's just call this tags. Right. So we have different uh, layouts here. So we're going to go with the vertical layout. And we're also going to select do not show field if empty. And also we want to hide product sorting. Next, we're going to go to this infinity scroll. And because by default, it's set to uh, standard pagination. So we want infinite scroll. Okay, so we also need to uh, go further down here and set our button and make sure it's set to no reset button here. Okay, it's very important. So pretty much this is all we need to um, add here on the settings. So we're going to save this. Now, the next step here is to create a category field. So I'm going to go ahead and select this and just drag it over here. Now let's give it a name and we're going to call this categories. So the first thing here is to remove the product count. So now that we've added this, the next step here is to add the tag field. So I'm going to drag this down as well, just like what I did uh, earlier on. So now you just let go. And the field type now is going to be called type. And like we did before, we're going to uncheck this. And here on the color icons, we're going to say display tag as color icons. All right, so let's go ahead and add our colors here. So for the text color, it's going to be a really dark gray. So I'm going to go and add the uh, hexadecimal value. And by the way, I'm going to leave a link to the post in the show notes below that has all these colors. So you can just use them easily. Okay, so you can see here that is how easy it is to add your colors. 
And then finally, what we need to do here is to click on save. And you can see here that this is all saved. All right, great. So I'm going to close out of this. So now we have this short code here, which we're going to now copy because we're going to be using this very, very soon. So I've copied my short code here. Now we need to recreate the product category page template in the theme builder. So let's go ahead and do that. So now I'm going to come over here and hover over where it says Divi. And then we want to select the theme builder. I'm going to click here on this plus button. So our template here is going to be a specific category pages. So I'm going to come all the way down here. And here it is, specific category pages. So when you hover over here, it shows you your category pages. So I can then choose uh, whichever I want. So for this one here, let's go with cases. Okay. So now we can click on create template. So this one here is going to be specifically for cases. Now we are going to click on add custom body, build custom body. And for this example here, we're going to build everything from scratch. So I'm going to click here on start building. Right, so we're just going to close out of here for now and go into our section settings because here we need to add a background color. So I'm going to click here on background and the color I'm going to use is going to have some transparency. So I'm going to click here to add my color, but I'm just going to drag the slider down a little bit and then add the values between the brackets. So the values I'm adding here are the values that are going to bring our transparency and I can see here it's very subtle so I'm not sure if you can see it but that's the color that we need to use okay so once we're done with that oh I also I almost forgot if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below all right so now I can save this and then uh, we need to add our columns. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and choose my column structure and what I'm going to go with is I'm going to go with this column structure here. Now, before we add any modules, let's head over here to our row settings. So in our row settings, we're going to come over here to design sizing, and then we're going to activate use custom gutter width, and we're just going to reduce this to one. So what the custom gutter width does is it um, removes the space between the columns. Next on the desktop here on the width, we are going to set this to 90%. And for the maximum width, we are going to uh, set this to 1920 instead of 1080. Now let's set our margins and to do that we need to head over to spacing. So what we're going to do here for the margins is to set our left and right to auto and then on the top padding here we're going to set this to 100 pixels. So now it's time to add our modules. So I'm going to save this click here on this plus button and this is going to be a post title so I'm going to search for my post title here I'm going to select it okay so now here on the elements where it says show post title it's fine we need to leave this as yes and then we need to just uh, deactivate show meta and also we need to deactivate the show image all we have now is pretty much that Next, we're going to come over here to background and add a background color. So I'm going to paste it. So the next step now is to stylize our text. So I'm going to come over here to design and I'm just going to click on this paintbrush tool. So this is going to take me to my heading. So the font we're going to use is Josephine Sands. We're going to set this to bold. And we also want this to be all caps. And then we're also going to set a specific color for this. So I'm going to click here on the eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. Now let's add our size and our size here is going to be 32 pixels. Now, while we're here, you might as well go into this little icon here and set your sizes for the tablet and the phone. So for the tablet here, I'm going to set this to 28. And for the phone, I'm going to set it to 30. Okay. Great. So now that I've set my sizes, the next step here is to set my line height, which is going to be 1.2 EM. So as you can see here, our design here doesn't look great because all the text is way too close to the edge. So the way to fix that is by coming over here to spacing. And we're going to start here by adding our padding both to the top and the bottom. And we also need to add left and right which is going to be 30 pixels. So you may have noticed that uh, I added this chain and this just allows us to add the same value both on the on the top and the bottom. OK, so now that we have this all set, the next step here is go to uh, border because we need to give this some rounded corners. 
which is going to be 15 pixels. Now make sure that this chain is activated because that's what allows all our four sides to have those rounded corners. So if you break it, it means that you can only apply the rounded corners to the sides that don't, I mean, that have a value. Okay, so next I'm going to come over here to our box shadow and we are going to go with this style. And now let's uh, tweak this and make it look really, really cool. Right, so let's start with our horizontal position. So this is very important. So box shadow, horizontal position. Uh, currently it's at 12. We want this at, currently it's at 6. So we want this at 12. And then we're also going to do the same for our vertical here. And then for our blur strength, we're going to set this to 20 pixels. And then the spread strength is going to be minus 5. Now it's time to add our shadow color. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Click here on the dropper tool and then I'm just going to drag the slider all the way up and then paste my color in here. Now, the reason why I drag the slider all the way up is because I don't want to have uh, any transparency on my shadow. All right, so that's looking great now. So remember that shortcut that we uh, copied earlier on? We are going to need it now. So this is where we're going to save this and we're also going to add another text module. So I'm going to search for it and select it. So now I'm going to replace all this text with my short code. So I want to give this a background color. So I'm going to come over here to background, click on this plus button and paste my color in here. Next, let's head over here to our text settings. So what we're going to do is to go into text, choose our font. We're going to add our color. Now for the size on the desktop here, I'm going to set this to 20. Let's just refresh this. So this needs to be 20 pixels. So now it's nice and bold. And we're also going to add a bit of spacing here, which is going to be one pixel. Now, just like before, this doesn't look great because all the text is way too close to the edge. So what I'm going to do now is to add a bit of padding in our design. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and we're going to start with our margin. And this is going to be 50 pixels so we can separate the two. Next, we're going to add a top and bottom padding. And this is going to be 40 pixels. And we're also going to apply 30 pixels here to the left and the right. And again, notice that I've used my chain icons. Okay. Now, we're also going to uh, add some borders around this because we want our design to be consistent uh, with what we have here on the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here to border and just add my 15 pixels, making sure my chain is activated. All right, so um, we also need to add our box shadow settings. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna scroll further down here, go to box shadow, choose my second option. Horizontal needs to be 12, vertical needs to be 12, blur strength needs to be 20. And over here on the spread strength, this is going to be minus five. And then finally, I am going to add my shadow color. So I'm gonna scroll down here, click on the eyedropper tool, drag the slider all the way up, and then paste my color in here. Okay, so as you can see, I have my categories here, and I also have the category types. And also, these two are looking very, very consistent. Now, let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so our design is starting to take shape now. So over here, we are going to add a shop module. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and I'm going to search for shop and select it. So first things first, on the product view type, we're going to choose category. So further down here for the column layout, I'm going to set this to three columns. So for this design, I need to really make sure everything is consistent here with the rounded corners. So I'm going to come over here to design. As you can see, my images here do not have rounded corners. So I'd really want to make sure I have rounded corners. So I'm going to click here on this brush tool and then set my rounded corners here to 15 pixels. So now you can see my images are looking much, much better. All right. So um, I also need to uh, go in and add my shadows. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to choose the second option. And my horizontal position needs to be at six. Vertical position six is fine. And then the blur strength is fine too. But what I need to change here is the color, the shadow color. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool, drag the slider all the way up and add my color in here. So now let's go to our title text. So I'm going to click here on this brush tool, 
Let's change our font here to Josephine Sands. The weight here needs to be semi bold and we also need to add a color just to customize it. So I'm going to click here on the paintbrush tool, paste my color. And uh, as you can see, the size here is a bit too small. So we need to uh, adjust that. So we're going to set this to 26. Okay, so that's looking much better now. And we also need to add a bit of leather spacing. So let's set this at uh, two pixels. Now it's time to adjust our price text. So again, I'm going to hover over here, click on this paintbrush tool. Now, the reason why I like doing this is because it just takes me directly to the item I need to make changes to. So on the price font, I'm just going to click on the drop down here and set my Josephine Sands. The alignment is going to be right. So I'm going to set my alignment here to right. Next, I'm going to add my color. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool, paste my color in here. And my size is going to be 15 pixels and letter spacing needs to be two pixels as well. And then finally, for my price line heights, I am going to set this to 46. Now, the one thing I may also have forgotten to do is to uh, align my uh, title here to the right as well, just to keep everything consistent. Okay, so now that I have all that set, you can see here that uh, things aren't looking really good in our layout because we don't have uh, enough space around here on the padding. So this is what we are going to do. So I'm going to come all the way down here and choose spacing. And this is where we're going to add our top padding, set this to 50 pixels and our left padding. We're going to set this to 50 as well. Right. So we're, while we're here, we're also going to add some custom CSS. And uh, so we come to click here on advanced custom CSS. And let's head over here and target our image. And this is the CSS code we need to add. Now let's go to the pricing and also add this CSS code. So as you can see here, we've added our padding bottom, but we've done it via CSS. Okay, so this is looking much, much better now. This is looking great. And by the way, before I forget, if you want to use the exact same code as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now pretty much we're done. I'm going to hit save changes. And you can see now we have this beautiful layout. So what we're going to do now is we're going to save this. And we're going to close out of here and save changes. So now when we view this product category and in this specific one is cases, you can see here it has the title and we also have our products. And here is where we can go in and filter through this right here. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.